This is an apple. This is also an apple. <laughs> I may not be a very good apple squeezer, but this thing sure is. Who's writing these jokes? Anyway, this is the Apple Squeezer Apple 2GS Accelerator, and it is no joke. It's brand new, almost unbelievably powerful, and today we're going to check it out together. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy retro tech YouTubers asking you to subscribe before even showing you the fruits of their labor, really? I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We do a lot of Apple and Macintosh shenanigans around here, so it's definitely worth sticking around. The Apple Squeezer GS is a brand new accelerator built by Nick Van Suchtelen from the wonderful land of the Netherlands. Using the power of FPGA along with a real 14 megahertz 65816 processor, the Apple Squeezer accelerates an Apple II GS way faster than any period accelerators ever did nearly as fast as the fastest overclocked accelerators and modern recreations of the Transwarp GS. Oh, I guess we'll need an actual Apple II GS to test this thing out on, and this is an Apple IIe. Ow. There we go. This is the transparent Stealth II GS that we built a little while ago. If this is your first time seeing this behemoth, check out the build video right here. Now, I first found out about the Apple Squeezer thanks to Nick's post on the Apple Fritter forums back in December of 2021. And basically, I've been trying to get my hands on one ever since then, which has been basically impossible. Thanks to the global component shortage, Nick has been releasing them in, well, pretty small batches every couple of months. Imagine my absolute surprise when just a few weeks ago, Nick reached out to me and asked me if I've heard about his project. Oh, have I? He generously offered to set one aside for me from the next batch, and uh, <laughs> here it is. Uh, I can hardly believe it. I've lusted after this thing for months. Now, he didn't send this to me for free or even in exchange for any kind of review. So any warts that we run into while playing with this thing, and I fully expect some, we'll discover together. So what I'd like to do today is first, we'll take a closer look at the Apple Squeezer itself. We'll crack it open and uh, see how it works and hopefully not destroy it in the process. And uh, then I want to compare it first to the stock 2GS at a paltry 2.8 megahertz, and then against my Zip GS upgrade running at 7 point something megahertz. And then the most important thing of all, just how much better will this thing run Wolfenstein 3D? Okay, so the Apple Squeezer is a cool little sandwich of two different boards here with sockets that hold it together on either side. And uh, I'm going to leave this little height extender socket on here so I don't accidentally bend any of the pins on the Apple Squeezer itself. But yeah, this should ply apart pretty easily, so... Let's try to open this up without breaking it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Plastic spudger. And uh, just to make sure there's nothing in the middle here that I'm going to hit with the spudger. And I should probably also take note of the orientation of the two boards here. So we've got four dots here corresponding to the front notch of this socket here. So four dots, front notch. Don't let me forget it. All right, crack the old apple in half. So the black board here is the FPGA board. It's the Xilinx Spartan 6. And according to my expert Googling, it's optimized for automotive applications, which is pretty cool because when this thing is together and sticking out of your computer, it kind of looks like a carburetor. Pretty neat. And here is the Apple Squeezer itself with just a few chips on here, including the most important right here, the 65C18 chip, the actual same processor 
that's in the Apple II GS. Just this is a different package, surface mount package, and uh, yeah, rated to go quite a bit faster. And I really like the Apple Squeezer logo. It looks quite nice on this board. Uh, shame it's hidden on the other side, but you know, it's probably pretty expensive to print on this side of the board for just that one thing. Okay, so I have the 2GS running some benchmarks now on the stock processor, and uh, we've run into the first kind of limitation of the Apple squeezer. Unfortunately, due to DMA issues, and as we all know, DMA stands for direct memory access, it won't work with my beloved micro drive turbo. So we have to switch to something different. Uh, like the wonderful but very expensive CFFA 3000, but unfortunately mine doesn't work. It never worked. It just started crashing right out of the gate uh, in the menu system. So yeah, unfortunately we are now booted off of the floppy emu, which, you know, this is the handiest device on the face of the planet. I'm worried it's a little bit slow, maybe slowing down the system here, but at least it'll be consistent so we can see the percent improvement of the Zip GS and the Apple Squeezer over the stock 2.8 megahertz CPU. And of course, let's get a feel for Wolfenstein at 2.8 megahertz. <laughs> this is gonna be pretty brutal, I suspect. All right. Ooh, that is, that is not fast. <laughs> I do like to play with the trackball, actually. It's a lot of fun this way. And I mean, it's not too bad. Calling it frames per second is maybe a little bit generous, but it does work. And then another quirk of Wolfenstein on the Apple II GS, and I don't really understand why this is the case. The regular Apple II GS used ADB, just like the Macintosh, but on the Stealth II GS and on a lot of the early II GS motherboards, there are header pins to use your Apple II style keyboard. And yeah, these buttons don't work in the game. I don't understand why the keyboard doesn't work. A couple of the keys do work, but yeah, the playing the game keys do not. Can't open doors, you can't shoot. So yeah, have to resort to plugging in the ADB keyboard here. All right, let's pop in ZipGS. So we just have to carefully pry out the original processor, which I am terrible at doing. <laughs> and we install the original 65816 on the Zip GS board here, just like that. And now we get to use the super fancy 65C816 running at 7.0 megahertz, 7.2. I forget, we'll find out in a second. All right, according to Zip GS control, we're running at 100% speed at eight megahertz. So first, let's run those benchmarks. Okay, so the benchmarks are complete and it's interesting, a lot of these scores show actual megahertz of under eight megahertz, except for a floating point test, which is over eight megahertz. And uh, yeah, we'll save these scores here. And let's check out some Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah, we loaded into the level at least twice as fast, if not faster. And oh yeah, <laughs> the game is much more playable here at probably eight megahertz. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, the animations were just comically slow before. The doors still feel a bit slow. And oops, I almost died. But yeah, this is now what I would call a playable game. All right, let's squeeze this apple. All right, it's time for the most exciting part, except there's problems. 
Yeah, right as I was uh, fixing to do this, I get an email from Nick about the Apple Squeezer and he lets me know that unfortunately, he's gotten a couple of reports of people with very early Apple 2GS motherboards having some issues with their accelerators, either not running at all or giving them funky errors and, and not being stable and, and crashing. Uh, <laughs> so he rewatched my video and very kindly discovered that my board is one of the ones he's had a report about. So yeah, this might not work at all. And if it doesn't, then uh, I guess this video will be filled with uh, clickbait and disappointment. But we're going to give it a try now and we're going to see if it works. Yeah, I am really grateful that Nick took the time to check my previous video on this machine to see if I had one of the affected boards and, you know, unfortunately I do, but at least we're going into this and I'm not going to be, you know, banging my head against the wall trying to figure out why it's not working if indeed it doesn't work. But we're going to install this and uh, we have to clear one other hurdle and by clear I mean literally clear. This header and ribbon cable is right in the way of where the apple squeezer has to go so i'm going to add some risers to it and uh nick sent this one socket along with it which i think he intends you to replace the socket that's on the motherboard here which is kind of a cheap socket but instead i'm going to use it as a riser there we go and uh, st yeah, still not enough to clear it. So I have some of this style of break off riser here. There we go. Totally professional job. <laughs> Let's see if we clear it now. Oh yeah, we're in there. But yeah, I guess let's just power this on and see if it boots. All right. No sound. All right, well, after some light trial and error with the riser, it works. And it turns out, I think that this kind of riser with the round pins here wasn't making good contact to the OEM Apple socket in there. But when I tried a riser with these chunky little flat pins on it, well, here we go. <laughs> We're booted into GSOS. Let's run the benchmark to see what our megahertz is. All right, option number one. Accelerator is the base speed, yep. Do one set of tests. I feel like this is going way faster <laughs> than it did before. <laughs> Look at these scores. Look at that. Uh, our fastest actual megahertz is 15.87. And then everything else is in the 12s and 13s. Uh, but that is way faster than the 6 to 8 megahertz that we got with the Zip GS. <laughs> yes, yes, I want to save this. All right, so now we can take a look at these against one another. Call this one squeeze.dat. Wow, these windows feel buttery smooth. Look, there is no redraw, hardly any redraw at least. You know, on the stock processor, dragging a window, you drag it and then it would slowly redraw itself. So this is pretty incredible. Wow. Can I just open these as text files? Yes. All right, here are the stock scores. Here is the Zip GS, which is yeah, quite an improvement. And here is the Apple Squeezer. And just look how much faster that is. 500 iteration, integer math, 281.83. That is like, what, half? <laughs> oh man, this is unbelievably fast. Oh, and then of course the other thing to check, which I forgot for a second about this Apple II GS. Oh, look at that. We have 14 megs of RAM on an Apple II GS. That might as well be 14 gigs of RAM. That's just a ridiculous amount of memory. All right. Well, you know what we have to try next. The most important test of all.
All right. Whoa. <laughs> Look at this. Keyboard control. That is quite a nice frame rate. Oh, and using the trackball even better. Oh yeah, look at that. This is how this game is meant to be played. Oh, it's so fast. Oh, look at it. Look at it. It's so fast. Whoa. Oh, no slowdown. No jankiness. It's buttery smooth. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is worth it. This is worth every penny. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so fast. Wow, I could just sit and play this game. It is amazing to play this on an Apple II GS. All right, well, I played through an entire level and uh, yeah. Didn't crash, played extremely smoothly and super fast. Amazing. But let's try some other games and software to see if we run into any of these bugs that Nick was talking about. Hey, look how fast it's extracting this Shrink It archive. Okay, so this is the independently built Super Mario Brothers for the Apple II GS. And this game runs very slow on the stock machine and still kind of slow on the Zip GS. Let's see what the Apple Squeezer does for this unofficial Mario game. <laughs> awesome. It's like full speed. <laughs> Oh, look at it. All right. I beat it. The first level. I wonder how much of this game is actually in here. I usually give up by this point because it's so slow. But look how fast it is on this machine. Okay, you know, we have to try. Good old frogfind.com. Search for Apple Squeezer GS. Well, I really need to work on a version of Frogfind that works well on Weber because yeah, a lot of this text is almost unreadable because it's trying to do some kind of dithering. So yeah, maybe I just need to go with a more solid color that's Apple 2GS friendly. Yeah, check it out. We can technically browse the web on the 2GS. Let's try a site that'll work a little bit better here. Retro.mac84.net. Yeah, I should use this font color. This is much, much more readable. Look how fast this scrolling is on this fully rendered HTML page. <laughs> I have computers in the gigahertz that are much worse with, well, modern web browsers, but still, this is rendered HTML. Okay, so that'll do it for today's video. And, uh, <laughs> wow, I'm just, I'm so incredibly excited and I just, I just can't believe it. I've had this stealth Apple II GS project in mind since like 2013. And this motherboard I bought by itself probably in 2015. And it's been sitting around since then as I was trying to figure out how to get the rest of the parts that I need to do this build. And really it's thanks to all of you that I'm able to get this to this level of bonkers with this clear case and this amazing Apple squeezer accelerator and just the keyboard and everything. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you for watching all of these videos. 
and uh, enjoying this stuff right along with me because I love it. I love these old computers and uh, just taking them to the most extreme level that they can go. Yeah. And this Apple squeezer is amazing. I haven't run into a single issue in the hours now that I've been playing with it. Uh, the one thing I noticed is that if I bump the computer, it can freeze, but that's because I'm using a pretty janky riser in there to raise up the Apple squeezer over the keyboard header. So maybe those issues that some people had with early revision Apple IIGS motherboards are just flukes of those specific boards. And I don't think anyone else has put an Apple squeezer into a Stealth 2GS, so this might just be the fastest Stealth Apple 2GS in the world currently. And that's pretty darn cool. And of course, now I have some pretty awesome accelerators and cards that I'm not using in the Stealth 2GS anymore, including the amazing Zip GS upgrade, which is super rare and was donated by a very kind viewer of the channel. So what I think I wanna do is put together a normal looking Apple II GS with a bunch of these components and kind of have both available that I can show off together at say VCF East. But that's it for this week. Thank you, Nick, again so much for setting one of these Apple squeezers aside for me. Ah, man, this thing is just awesome. But if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Apple shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alberto Guerre, Camilla Noceda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Rut K Mods, Ryan and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible. <laughs>